Hello everyone. Welcome to our YouTube channel Neat Yog. I am Arun Kumar. I would like to say thanks to all the subscribers who have subscribed to our channel. If you have not subscribed to our channel, please subscribe to it so that it motivate us to come up with interesting videos. In this particular video session, I'll be discussing a very important concept for Neat that is Ernst Mayer's famous biological concept of species. Okay, so along with that, I'm going to discuss another important concept, which is a small concept actually, that is polytypic species. Even you could expect this question actually, okay, about polytypic species. First, let us see what is exactly species. Okay, before that, I want to say about John Ray. This particular scientist actually coined the term species. Though, so the species term was given by John Ray. Remember this, another possibility for need, John Ray. Okay, so species. Before I define what is exactly species, I would like to tell you that, you know, see, you know, you could see two different organisms, right? You know, this is Panthera tigris and this is Panthera leo. Okay, Panthera panthera. That means, you know, these two different organisms belong to the same genus, but when it comes to species, this differs from this, correct? So, this is tigris and this is leo. This is tiger, this is lion. Correct. So both are different organisms or both are different species. Okay. So species, the definition says like this, it is the group of individual organisms with fundamental similarities, group of individual organisms with fundamental similarity. What is exactly fundamental similarity? So I will explain this when I explain biological concept of species. There are actually four important theories, particularly the fourth one is the main basis of this theory actually. So you have to focus on this particularly because very, very important for NEAT, okay? So let us just, you know, see, according to Ernst Mayer, okay, I would like to tell you that Ernst Mayer is also called as Darwin of 20th century. This is also very important. So he is compared to Darwin. We all know Darwin is the father of evolution. So he is compared to Darwin in the sense he was the Ernst Mayer also. He was a leading evolutionary biologist and also he was actually an ornithologist. He was actually born in German. So he was a German biologist. Okay, so Darwin of 20th century. Remember this. Note this point actually Darwin of 20th century. Okay. So let us see what is exactly according to Ernst Mayer's biological concept of species. What is exactly species? Okay, so according to him, species are group of organisms. Group of organisms which According to him, species are group of organisms which are closely related. This is the first theory of BCS. Okay, so here I just want to draw a circle to explain the first theory of BCS. Okay, so here I will put capital letter T, T, T. Here T in the sense the tiger. Okay, that means this circle is now compared to a particular geographical area. You can even imagine a forest, okay? Particular geographical area. So I'll just write geographical area, the circle. And inside the circle, you could see a lot of T's. It's nothing but tigers. Many tigers are there. How many are there? One, two, three, four, five, six tigers are there. Just imagination, okay? So are closely related. Okay, so we take this tiger. You could see, for example, if you imagine one more tiger, you have already seen tigers, correct? Okay, if you imagine a tiger, so obviously like, you know, if you Im compare two tigers, so they are morphologically, that means their appearance is same, right? Morphologically, they are same. Structurally, they are same. Okay, they are closely related in terms of structure. Okay, they are structurally, they are same. At the same time, their function also same. What is the meaning of function here? You know, function in the sense like their behavior or their characters. All the tigers, you know, their roar. Even their, uh, for example, uh, feeding method is also same, right? You know, they are all carnivorous, okay? So structure and function both are same. 
this is one tiger if i compare this tiger with another tiger so morphologically they are same at the same time you know their functions also same but living in a particular geographical area so that is actually the first theory are closely related in structure that is morphologically as well as functionally remember this okay we go to the next theory of bcs that is you know the species shares a common gene pool here the meaning of gene pool is the total number of genes present in a population for example we just you know number these tigers t1 t2 t3 t4 t5 and t6 that means in a particular geographical area there are six tigers okay so we'll just pull out one tiger uh, let us pull this we'll pull the t1 tiger okay so let us assume that it is a male tiger okay and we'll pull one more tiger that is t5 let us assume that it is a female tiger so when they mate when they interbreed it's going to produce a baby tiger that is cub tiger okay so we just write t7 that means a new member is added to this population right okay we just use yellow color we just write t7 so it's a new member okay so it is the product of t1 and t5 so after the t7 after attaining reproductive maturity so if it mates with t2 so it's going to produce another tiger that is t8 okay so t8 is added so as the process continues obviously what happens the genes will be circulated within the population correct so there is no mixing up of genes there is no addition of new genes correct so the genes will be circulated within the population so that is actually the thing they share a common gene pool though so this is the second theory so we go to the next theory that is you know the species can interbreed freely in nature freely in nature that means in their habitat in their natural habitat so and as a result they are going to produce offspring whatever the offsprings which are produced because of this they should be fertile according to this theory what is the meaning of fertile that means you could understand that t7 into t2 produces t8 again t8 will mate with another tiger so again it going to produce offspring so that means you know whatever the offsprings which are produced they are fertile they are they have the ability to reproduce so i'll write here produce fertile offspring remember this produce fertile offspring okay okay fine so that is actually the thing to remember for example i will add one more example here for example panthera tigris will just add subspecies okay so we'll add uh, for example let us assume that this is indian tiger panthera tigris tigris if it mates with another subspecies of tiger that is panthera tigris sumatri the indonesian tiger so it's going to produce tiger correct so that means you know the species means you know they have the ability to interbreed freely in nature and whatever the offsprings which are produced they have the ability to reproduce that is according to bc yes now the fourth one as i said earlier that this is very very important because it is the main basis of the theory main basis of the theory okay remember this please note this point because very important for neat actually okay so here are reproductively isolated from other species if we take two species okay so i will use image now so i have see this is horse and this is the lion okay i'll hold it like this okay so can you think do you think that you know can these two different organisms can breed that means mate and produce offspring impossible right they cannot right because both are different organism that is actually the meaning of this statement actually the, fo the fourth theory are reproductively isolated that means you know the organism the species are reproductively separated that means the two different species cannot mate and produce the offspring okay so that is the main basis of the theory but the biological concept of species of ernst mayer has certain drawbacks that means what is exactly the drawback the drawback in the sense some exceptions are there okay we'll write it remember this drawbacks of bcs what is the drawback for example you have seen mule okay so that is actually the offspring of male donkey and female horse male donkey and female horse actually produces mule 
mule is sterile but whatever it is it has produced offspring so according to the fourth theory the species must be reproductively isolated from other species but here you could see that the donkey can mate with the horse it's impossible according to this theory it should not happen according to this theory but it happened actually the mule is produced we'll take one more example actually this happens in nature that is in their natural habitat not under a captivity for example we take one more example here that is a male tiger under captivity in uh, that means actually in zoological parks actually okay when they don't get uh, another female tiger the male tiger will mate with the female lion that is lioness as a result there will be offspring offspring is produced that is actually called as tigon and this interestingly in the case of mule it is sterile that means it cannot produce offspring even if it mates with another mule it's not possible but in the case of this tigon can mate with another for example like you know another uh, organ the organism that is tiger or lion as a result you know it can produce offspring okay so it is fertile that means the two examples disproves this theory of biological concept of species i okay, hope you understood biological concept of species remember this particularly this fourth theory just i want to add one more concept here as i said earlier that is what is exactly polytypic species polytypic species poly poly means many correct polytypic species means panthera tigris tigris this particular indian tiger has a subspecies that that is nothing but panthera tigris tigris indian tiger species even it could be seen in bangladesh also and another example is panthera tigris sumitri see whatever the species if they have subspecies see tigris this is actually sumitri that is indonesian tiger that is subspecies actually if any, the species is having subspecies then it is actually called as the polytypic species even the brassica is also very good example it is nothing but we cannot call it as subspecies in case to plants we call it as varieties just remember it the brassica family you know they exhibit polytypic species okay so that's all about from this video session